Well, hello, friends out there in YouTube land. Robert Ham here with Robert Ham Photography. We are outside, and you know what that means. It's another check out my camera. Today, it's the TL70 provided by Mint Camera for review. This camera is an Instax shooting camera. Yes, that's right. That is instant film, which means it develops right in front of you. It's about credit card size, and it is awesome. Out of all the Instax cameras that I've used in the past, I'm going to tell you right now, this is by far my favorite. There are a couple caveats, and I'd like to get started with that and share with you this great camera. Before we dive right in, if you're only watching here, you're missing half the story. Go see the images. I've been producing over 17 packs of film. That's 170 clicks of the shutter with this camera, and I am having an absolute blast producing beautiful portraits. And of course, portraits are what I happen to shoot. So if you're ready, let's dive right into it. The camera shoots Instax film, which is not necessarily unique. I'm glad that Fujifilm created it. But what Instax film is, is a very, very light sensitive film. Most of the time outdoors in a setting like this, photographers would use the Sunny 16 rule and shoot ISO 100 speed film. Instax, however, happens to be 800 speed. That's basically eight times more sensitive to light than what most analog or film photographers would usually choose to shoot. Now, Fuji pioneered that for their system and this has been adapted for use with the TL70. And there are some differences that come into play, which means that when using this camera, unlike a traditional point and shoot Instax camera, you have a quite a bit more control with full aperture priority control. However, it comes with one caveat. You have to understand the film a little bit. And even for me, a photographer who shot hundreds of weddings and hundreds of brides, it took me a couple of packs of film to really get going good with this camera but boy, did my patience reward me. Let me share with you a couple of the specs real quick. Walking around the camera, looking at it, it's got two lenses. Both of these lenses are roughly equivalent to a, about a 35 or 40 millimeter perspective, or maybe a little bit closer to 50 actually. And they're 80 millimeter lenses, but this is a medium format camera because the film is larger than 35 millimeters. So it gives you that more standard angle of view, which is pretty cool. It also has the ability for you to change the aperture. We said full aperture priority. We go from a special aperture called bokeh, which gives you cool little stars that you can make different kinds of shapes with. And that is different in each camera. That's more for artistic stuff. From f5.6 to f8 to f16 to f22. So we've got a very wide range of apertures that we get to choose. Most other Instax cameras don't give you that capability. And if they do, they don't give you this range of shutter speeds. In the automatic mode, this camera will choose a shutter from one second to one five hundredth of a second. Currently on the market, the ability to shoot with one second to one five hundredth of a second and from f5.6 all the way to f22 at the choice of the user is something that no other Instax camera offers and that's a pretty great feature right here. Let me tell you what I enjoy about this camera. It has a great meter on the front of it, this electronic eye. Now we've got to know something before we even get into the viewfinder, we've got to know about what this great meter is telling you. The meter is going to do a favor for you but it's not a spot meter. Most people are used to your cell phone where you tap the screen and it's going to change the exposure in order to meter for that area. And if you're not used to that and you are used to shooting film, you might be used to a spot meter inside the lens that actually gives you the center area where the camera's going to meter on and adjust exposure for. This camera does something a little bit different. This has a full matrix meter, and that means that it meters the entire scene. Now, there are some benefits to a spot meter, but there are also some benefits to a, a matrix meter. The number one benefit to the matrix meter is better control when shooting manual because the meter is going to tell you about the scene overall rather than just one small spot. But that also means that we have to think about using this camera just a little bit more in depth than we would a point and shoot. Because although you can point and shoot, the camera works best when you use it in that capacity of thinking and creating rather than just pointing and shooting. And that slows us down. In fact, I've seen that my Instax photography has leaped bounds because I've had to think about my shots. And because I don't like to waste film, it didn't take me very long before I got my ideas set on where I needed to think about light and how I want to meter. Now, as we continue on that, we're going to open it up and I'd like to share with you, this is a twin lens reflex camera. This is a camera that not only your grandmother would know how to use, but if she was born in the 1920s or 30s, which would put her 80s, 70s, 80s, 90s, somewhere up there, um, more like 80s and 90s, then she'd actually be familiar with the idea of choosing an aperture and understanding film speed. If your grandmother's a newer grandmother and maybe she's only 30 or 40 or 50 years old or something like that, she may not be so familiar for how to use this camera. And what I'm trying to share with you there is that the advancement of technology has helped us lose a very common skill that was just easy to come by a couple of decades ago. And that is 
the understanding that film is an analog medium and it uses light and that you have to choose a film and an aperture and you have to choose a shutter speed that work together. Here on this, we get to choose the aperture. The film speed is guaranteed for us right now and the shutter speed. We can affect control of the shutter speed very nicely with this um, exposure control dial right here. One or one stop over and one stop under or no exposure compensation, which is pretty cool. So looking through this big uh, bright viewfinder, we've got something really nice right there. And that is a Fresnel lens on the top. And the cool part about that is maybe you can see it right there as we're kind of turning it around. The cool part about that is that it allows you to see a very bright image rather than just your standard ground glass. And we have the ability to actually focus. The majority of the other instant cameras out there on the market that use Instax film do not offer a focus adjustment. They use a zone focus system of either mechanically changing it with the slider or pre-programmed spots that shift the lens in and out. Here, we don't have to worry about that. We can actually get tack shark images just by looking through the viewfinder. And even here in the bright day where the sun is coming down, on my screen, the Fresnel lens is providing a very bright, beautiful image for me. Now, there's a couple of things we also want to know. Mint didn't stop there. They decided you may need a flash, and yeah, that's right, you see it there. It's hidden under the Instant Flex logo. Now, I think that is amazing because one of the things about having a camera like this, you get the benefit of a leaf shutter. And with the benefit of a leaf shutter is higher flash synchronization speeds. And that's going to pay off when you're shooting in bright conditions like this at f22 so before we go any further let me just stop right here and give you some pro tips on when to use what on this camera if you're out in the day as you can see i'm lit by hard light and defined shadows you're going to want to be at f22 when you move to f22 make sure that you adjust your aperture so that you feel it naturally sit in the detent that's created for it f22 is a very small aperture it's much smaller than the lens and because the aperture is in front of the lens in this particular design if you don't adjust it nicely it'll be slightly off center and you can get vignetting now because we know that you can use vignetting in order to give you some really great creative capability but here let's just talk about not doing that and setting it gingerly so that we can get it right in the center nicely in this case, I also want to make sure that the camera is going to use the fastest shutter speed possible. And because the meter is set up to wait for the shadows in order to help you have properly exposed shadows, that's what most matrix meters do, you're going to want to switch your EV slider to the negative stop. That's going to guarantee that whatever the shutter speed the camera chooses, it's going to use one full stop faster. And in this case, the bright sun, the shutter would probably cho be choosing one four hundredth of a second, which is already almost maxing it out uh, because we're using 800 speed film with a sunny 16 rule tells us with 800 speed film, we need an aperture of 22 and a shutter speed of 400 in order to get a correct exposure. But we want to make sure that we get our correct exposure. So we're going to use flash and setting the exposure compensation to one stop down tells the camera to use one five hundredth of a second instead of one four hundredth of a second. And now, why would we use flash? Well, remember, we know that the camera is going to wait for the shadows. So what we're going to do is going to have the sun here. We're going to turn so that the sun is to the back. We've got a backlit subject. You can tell the light is here. It's not here. We're going to shoot this way. Normally, we wouldn't shoot into the sun. But because the matrix meter meters for the dark sides, meters for the shadows, we can shoot here and we want to illuminate the face. And because we've got a leaf shutter in here that can synchronize with the flash, guess what? Mission accomplished. How cool is that? We still have to be careful about the sun. If you're not using the flash, then always shoot with the sun to your back or your side with this camera and consider an ND filter pack. Another thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna turn this right now so that you can see some shade, okay? I want you to see the shade because I want you to understand this and I'm gonna walk. If your subject looks like this, like I am right here, that's defined shade. Notice how there was nothing on my face, no hot spots or anything. That's defined shade. You're going to want to use F8. You can bump it open to F8 there, and you can use negative or positive exposure compensation based on how dark it is. Here, because we are in a relatively sunny area, I would tend to use negative exposure compensation. But if we were in the, under the canopy of a forest, I would go ahead and use no exposure compensation because the F8 will be wide enough on its own and the camera will choose an appropriate shutter speed. Remember, this camera meters for the highlights. So whenever we can get the sun in the sky, which is very bright, out of the picture, you're going to be almost assured better results immediately. That doesn't mean we can't take landscape shots. It doesn't mean that we can't take shots of sunsets and things like that. 
It means that for your first couple packs of film, when you're feeling the camera out, these are our basic pro tips. And once you get them mastered, you can move into your more cre uh, creative and mastery type of lessons with this camera. Really cool. One last pro tip. If you are indoors using this camera, and let's say you have no lights on and it's just lit by window light in the room, rooms are really dark much darker than outside and even much darker than direct shade. So you're gonna to wanna to be at F5.6. If you're in a brightly lit room by window light, you might use F5.6 with negative exposure compensation. If you're in a dimly lit room, you might use F5.6 with positive exposure compensation or none. But here's one thing to know. Fujifilm Instax film is daylight balanced. So the minute that you turn on the tungsten or fluorescent lights that you have, the color is going to shift although the exposure will be correct. The way you get rid of that is by using the flash. Flash is daylight balanced and because the flash will be much brighter, although just for a brief second, than the room light and the ambient light, you will be able to color balance your pictures back with flash. Just make sure that whatever you have taking a picture of does not overlap something behind you because if it does, you'll get shadows. Maybe you can see, I'm trying to show an idea of shadows. If there's something directly behind you and you're using flash, you'll throw a shadow on it. You don't wanna do that most times. Guys, I'm a portrait photographer and these tips were designed around what I do best, which is portrait photography. But I would love to hear your pro tips. Find me over on Twitter, at Rob Ham Photo. Hit up Mint Camera with at Mint Camera. Leave a comment down below. I wanna thank you for watching. I am having an absolute blast with this camera. I've got over 20 videos on it and I wanna share with you those videos now. Two very important ones, understanding lighting and examples with the TL70. That'll show you the lighting examples we just talked about through a walk around. And one other one, the TL70 common problems and their fixes. The majority of the issues you're gonna find with this camera have to do with hardware, not software, or backwards. Have to do with software, not hardware. Yeah, you got what I mean. Guys, I'm Robert Hand with Robert Hand Photography. I want to thank you for watching, and I want to remind you that I will catch you on the flip side.